we wanted to show that clip, but you can understand why we It's a little racy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, just a little racy. A little bit. My kids are never watching it ever, 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 ever. Ever? Ever? Ever. <laughs> Welcome to Couch Surfing, the show where otherworldly guests look back at their big roles, their little roles, and everything in between. I'm here social distancing with Morena Bakarin. <laughs> Morena, how are you doing? Hi. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Well, I'm so happy to have you here. Are you ready to surf? I'm so ready. Let's do it. Oh, let's look at let's embarrassing see. moments. Yeah. You're going to have this? fun. This is going to be great. Oh, boy. Right off the top, huh? Just like that. I mean, you know, this series was the definition of a cult hit. I mean, one season, 13 episodes, a subsequent movie. 20 yeah. years later, the fandom is as strong as ever. Why do you think it's still so beloved? I ask myself that all the time. <laughs> I honestly think it was ahead of its time. You know, that nobody was doing sci-fi on, like, regular network TV. This was on Fox. That's true. Um, yeah. And he did it in a way that was realistic. Like there were no aliens. There's no like people with five heads. It was just people in the new frontier, which now seems even more possible when you think about what Elon Musk is doing with his company, sending people to space. But, you know, it's just regular human beings having to leave Earth because we've exhausted all those resources and the Earth is dying and you've had to, we've had to find a new place to live. And I think that a lot of people were a little taken aback by that premise and the fact that it wasn't like, you know, the traditional sci-fi laser gun thing. Is Firefly ever coming back? And <laughs> would you return if it did? I know you get this question all the time. I have to ask. I do get it all the time. Um, yes. I, 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 yes, is the answer that I would return. I, you know, okay. I, I don't know what, to what capacity or how it could happen. Unfortunately, we've lost one of our, our Fireflyers. Um, wrong glass. Um, but we are all on a text thread together. We talk all the time. Um, we've been connecting. We actually just a few days ago, we just checked in on each other to see how everybody was doing. Yeah. It's a very special place in all of our hearts. Um, it was one of those shows that, and I didn't know just how good it was or how good I had it until I then like went on to do other things. And I was like, oh yeah, not every job is like this. That's right. It was my very first TV show. Oh, but certainly not your last. No. Ready to keep surfing? <laughs> Let's Up do it. Next. First time I laid eyes on Matt was at a tailgate party. He was doing a keg stand. I see. I thought it was when you rushed my house as a little sister. Yeah. That's the first time you saw me. Oh my God, I'm such a baby in that. You know, I, I joke with Ben all the time that my husband, that if he had just paid attention to me when I was doing episodes of his TV show, that he could have had me in my prime. So your co-star was Ben McKenzie. He went on to become your husband. Yes. And you were never in a scene together. But no, I we were. I think stop. I think we like crossed paths in a party at, the, at some point okay. there. But no, and we never acted you, together. And you stopped by his trailer once, and he kind of blew you off. So how did yeah. you eventually get him to put a ring on it? Right. Well, I think you know. I had. I was like, all right. Well, I really just honestly wanted to say hello and meet him. <laughs> okay. Um, and he doesn't even remember the encounters. So that just goes to show you how far below the scale I was at that point. <laughs> I don't believe that. I don't believe he was just trying to be cool. He was. He was just trying to impress me. <laughs> Up next. Do you know how much that hurts? Oh. I'm sorry. What was it like to shoot something this emotionally demanding? It, it was, a, it was, a, it was a, there was a lot there. A lot to unpack. Um, it was um, a, a long day um, of just figuring out those tiny beats. The anger, seeing him picking it up right uh it, be, it meaning something so deeply to him oh. mm -hmm. um was a frightening moment that we really wanted to make sure we didn't jump over right um and in realizing how little she meant to him compared to his new religion and his new beliefs which yeah. were really Scary, although I will say I got some hate tweets about throwing it on the right? floor um, and how disrespectful that was. And I, you know, I suddenly realized that I was dealing with a, a, a much bigger beast than I had, you know, originally thought of. And I, I just flagged the, the tweet and I sent it to some, you know, PR people 
dealing with the show and just said like just keep an eye out for the stuff because it was at a time where right. you know our country was it was the, things were very racially charged as they are again but in a different yes. way um and wars had been fought over the stuff and so we, you know I, I just wanted to to make sure that we were all being responsible with how we dealt with with um all these topics did you ever think that the show would check in on Brody's family one last time I hoped I yeah. hoped I was kind of sake. like until the show really ended, I kept sort of thinking, I wonder if I'll get that phone call at some point, you know, even if it was a quick scene here and there. I, I don't know. But I, yeah, I guess it didn't really ever go that way. All right. Up next. I have a lot of bruises from this one. I was going to say, this looks so exhausting. How physically demanding were, yeah. I mean, were these fight scenes? Good, Incredibly physically yeah. demanding. Um, that was a particularly <laughs> bad one. Um, I had my knees on both my legs were purple for weeks, like all of it. And, and, and we shot this right there. It's my, it's my double. But then right here, it's me. You know, like we would go back. We did it a few times. And then I was like, I, my knees cannot take it. And the double would take over and do the falling and all that stuff. Uh, we all got pretty banged up. I couldn't wear any knee pads because I was in a skirt. You know, um, it was really rough. Do you yeah. uh, see you and Ben working together again anytime soon? Perhaps a Gotham movie? Yeah, sure. I mean, it was okay. really fun. We work well together and it was nice to, it, it was very relaxing to be at work together and not be home with the children. <laughs> Welcome back to Couch Surfing. I'm still here with Morena Bakarin. Morena, shall we continue? Let's do it. All right. I'm taking some time off, so I'll see you guys when I get back. Oh, where are you going? <laughs> Copperade. It's so much fun doing this. Um, these two comedians, I mean, it, it doesn't get much better than this. It really doesn't. And we improvised and had moments. And Melissa McCarthy was like, she was so um, giving and like, you know, she'd come up with ideas and she'd be like, Hey, do you, do you want to try this? And I was like, yes, I will try anything. <laughs> 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 um, we had Paul Feig on the show recently and he said oh. that he loved making this film. What about being on set made it so enjoyable? Um, first of all, his suits, he had yes. a different suit every single day and I was in <laughs> awe of his style. Yes. Uh, the food in the sit in the city of Budapest is incredible. So that was awesome. Oh. Uh, everybody was, you know, just really, it was like a very calm, very chill, very like, I don't even know how to describe it. Like it was so civilized, the, yes. the set and, and working with everybody and people were around and chatting and like, you know, people weren't like in their trailers being snooty. And it was just really, it was a really pleasant experience. All right. Up next. Oh, this one. Oh, this one. <laughs> I had one of the best times of my life just shooting this first movie. It was so fun to be on that set. And it was creative and fulfilling and enjoyable all around. He is the best person to work with and so sweet and so damn funny. Like it hurts. <laughs> it just hurts. So oh, much of the time laughing in that bar scene, like I'm genuinely laughing at him. All right. Spoiler alert. Fans were upset that Vanessa was killed off early in the second installment. But thanks to some time travel trickery, <laughs> you appear again at the end. So I have to ask you, how big will your role be in the third installment? I have no idea. Apparently they're still writing it. Um, I, I, I genuinely don't know. I have not been asked or approached or... You know, there's been no conversations yet. So I am awaiting with bated breath. How big do you want it to be? As big as possible. Okay. <laughs> I we'll mean, let him know. He will always be the lead, but I would yeah. love to be right by his side. <laughs> All right. Up next. You see that thing? The, the red thing? It's very, um, it's doing weird things. To emotionally people. draining working on this. It was really you know, challenging in, in ways that I didn't expect. I, I mean, I yeah. read the script and I thought, okay, yeah, this seems really cool. I like it. And as I started working on it, I realized like, oh, this is a lot harder than I thought because I'm 
there are so many levels to this alternate universe, you know, and I just wasn't sure that I could figure out how to do it, how to play. You can't play all that stuff at once. So you kind of have to trust that it's like in the visually in the cues that you're seeing and in the directing and the writing and, um, it, it was really tiring every day, you know, because she's also in such a heightened state of like, as soon as she finds out things are weird, right. she's in this heightened state running around trying to figure it out. And then once she figures it all out, it's basically like she's discovered that she's not real. You know, there's this sort of death that happens yeah. and having to like come to terms with all of that. And it's such a short um, episode. It's really I know. challenging. Yeah. Oh, Marina. Thank you for surfing by. Thank you. That was a strange, you know, and but enjoyable chat down memory lane. You can watch all episodes of The Twilight Zone on CBS All Access starting June 25th. And see you next time on Couch Surfing. Bye. Bye. Thank you.